I, my goodness, I want to lift my head and talk normal, but like, oh my goodness, there's something in my eyeball. Hi everyone, it's Karis. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I have two markets coming up. Today's Wednesday. I have one on Saturday, that's an all day thing. And then I have another one that's on Thursday. That's just an evening craft fair from four to nine, I think. So I have two craft fairs, both supposedly have really good traffic. So <laughs> crossing my fingers that it's not like the last one, especially not with the tornado and everything else that happened. If you wanna hear about that, go ahead and check that out up here. I did want to say thank you guys so much for all of the love on my previous craft market vlog. We've got so many subscribers, so many people who joined the family, and I am so grateful and I'm so excited for the future and everything to come. So thank you guys so much again for being here. You guys are awesome and we are so, so close to 1,000 subscribers and I could not be more grateful. So thank you guys again so much. There's quite a few things that I want to get done. The first thing is that I want to make sure that I have enough little mini octopi. I've mentioned before in a, several of my videos that like my mini octopi are just a really good seller at my shows even when it's really slow. So I really want to make sure that I just have tons of these little guys prepared so I don't have to worry about restocking them but I also don't have to worry about running out. So I've got this little box here that I'm trying to fill. Right now I only have the three colors in here. I have blue, purple, and a red one. I have a few other colors that I need to make. I need to make some more in this dark purple color. I have this green color that I want to use and then I need to finish up with the purple and the blue and then possibly some yellow ones too. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> So I need to go ahead and do that and make as many as absolutely possible and that's the goal for today. So let's get started. <laughs> Currently 11.26. I have this one that I started yesterday that I haven't finished yet so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that one and then I'll just keep pressing on with some more. <laughs> right now so i spent four hours working on these <laughs> octopi but i made three of these green color three of these oh my goodness i keep dropping them three of these blue color three of these light purple color and then three of these dark purple color now our box is definitely filled. I probably am going to end up making more, but now I want to work on something else because I've been doing that for like four hours and I need a change of pace. I found this free axolotl pattern on Instagram, so I think that I'm going to go ahead and try that because a lot of people say that the axolotls are, sell really well, so I want to go ahead and give that a go. Look at how cute this chunky little boy is getting. Look at his little arms. I'm so excited about this. I hope this turns out really nice. <laughs> really cute until I finished the head and now, now he kind of looks like a trust the process. He looks like he got shaved and he's not happy about it. Okay guys, I finished his fins on the side of his head and I'm not really super happy with how he turned out. I don't really know 
what kind of went wrong. This is probably like the worst thing I've ever made, honestly. I followed the instructions for like these little side fins thing and it just really did not make sense to me because it said to do like a slip stitch and then a single crochet, a half double crochet, a single crochet, and a slip stitch again, all in the same stitch. And I don't know if it's just me, but when you slip stitch into a stitch and then you try to make another stitch into that slip stitch stitch, then it's insanely difficult. And I don't know if maybe there was a typo or what happened, or maybe I'm just not meant to make axolotls, but this did not come out the way I wanted it to. He just looks so janky. <laughs> this might go in my clearance section. We're gonna scrap this idea. All right, well, it is currently 5.30, so I am going to go ahead and make some dinner. Probably gonna make a few more things today, but honestly, I'm not sure. I might just kind of take a break, but if I do, you'll know. <laughs> so, I'll see you then. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Thursday now. We have two days until the craft fair. I did have to take my glasses off because that glare was just absolutely insane and it would have looked so bad on camera. So I did have to get rid of that. So that's why I look a little bit different today. But it's like five o'clock in the afternoon right now and I haven't really done anything for this day, mainly because it is my fiance's birthday today. So I've been doing a ton of stuff to kind of prepare for that and get him some really nice surprises for his birthday done today for when he comes back from work in an hour. So I've been busy doing that. So I haven't done much in terms of crocheting, but the next thing I want to work on is my cute little jellyfish. Look at how cute he is. Oh, I love him so much. I do want to work on quite a few more of those, hopefully to have them for my craft fair. I don't know if my jellyfish are going to be a hit at either one of these markets, but I do want to make sure I have a few of them in there at least because I feel like they could definitely be a good seller and I really, really like making them. I'm so excited about the pattern. I'm so excited to release it. So yeah, we're going to make a few more of those. Friday now. It is 11.07 and my craft fair is tomorrow. I started making the stingers to the jellyfish yesterday. This is a pile of mess, but pretty much I just have one more stinger that I have to make. I started doing it around five. I forgot to mention that and I got most of them done except for I need one more of the longer stinger and then I will be able to put my next jellyfish together. We're gonna go right back at it to finish up this next next jellyfish. I do have some things that I need to do on Square online. I need to take inventory of everything that I have and add that to there because I finally got a little Square reader that I'm going to be able to use at this next market. So I need to go on there and do that. I want to figure out how to record this screen so that I can show you guys what it looks like and like what I'm doing, but that might not be possible yet. I still need to learn how to do that. So maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't. I hope I'll be able to show you too, but I don't know yet. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna finish up a jellyfish and then we'll just keep moving forward. <laughs> The stinger is done. Now we just have to attach it to the belly of the jellyfish and then attach the belly to the head that I also still need to put eyes on. All right, he's all done. He's so cute. I love him so much. He's like my favorite thing. He's so adorable. So now we have two of them. I really do want to make more of these guys because I really love them so much, but I hope that other people love them too. <laughs> it's 11.54 right now, so I think it took me like an hour all together to get everything to sew into the belly and then sew the belly to the jellyfish. It kind of rhymed. The belly to the jelly. <laughs> 
All right, so I do have a good amount of this yarn left over that I could probably make another one of this color concept with, but I do have that other yarn that I got. I do have this one that I got. I think I might just go ahead and make one in this color for my next one, just so that I have like a little bit of a variation for these little guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. <laughs> All right, so it is now 2.04. If you hear the AC in the background, I'm so sorry. It's super hot and I really had to turn it on. But I just finished this little guy. I think that I might have to adjust the pattern with how many stingers he has if it's this like thicker yarn because it's not much thicker than the other one, but it definitely is significant enough to where it kind of looks like he has a little bit too many stingers now. But I mean, that's okay. It's a new pattern. I'm still learning like the ins and outs of it. But yeah, so we have this little guy done now and I think what I'm going to do now is go ahead and go get something to eat because I haven't eaten anything at all today yet so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'm probably gonna go through like all of the inventory that I have and show you guys that so that you can see that before tomorrow and while the sun is still out so it's still a nice video <laughs> okay so I'm currently sitting on the floor next to my desk because I have a whole bunch of things that I need to do all of these boxes right here that you see beside me all have inventory in them Hi, Tony. And I want to see if I can get that inventory into this so that I don't have to worry about carrying all of these boxes. Now, this one down here doesn't have like too much inventory. It's like half inventory and the rest of it is just like display stuff. So I really wanna get all of that stuff. I need to inventory it. I need to see how much I have of each item so that I can put it on my Square website later. And then right next to me, I actually got a wagon, <laughs> finally. <laughs> I was going to take this out of the box and make sure that it is what I <laughs> ordered before tomorrow because if it's not then I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> But yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna try to do this as fast as possible because it's actually really hot in this room and I have to turn the AC off so it doesn't completely overload my audio and make it sound super horrible. So I'm gonna try to go as fast as possible. But yeah, that's what we're about to do. First thing I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and open this bo bad boy. This thing is actually super heavy. <laughs> My cat's gonna go inside of that, I bet. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, that's not happening. Oh, just cut it. He's gonna cut it. Okay. This thing is big. This should do the trick. It looks like everything is all together too and I don't have to put anything together, so that's super nice. I mean, I didn't figure that I'd have to put anything together, but you never know. So I guess this is just like the base. Oh, okay, here's instructions. I'll deal with that later. <laughs> but look, they have a handle. Hmm. That's nice. All right, so this should make it so much easier. I'm just gonna, oh my goodness, this thing is heavy. Oh, good Lord. Okay, that thing seems to be fine. What are you doing? Weaver, what are you doing? It's not for you. What? Don't look at me like that. You need to get out, sir. Excuse you. I'm going to go lay somewhere else. Time to get to the inventory part. I'm just going to write this stuff down by hand and then upload it on my computer because I do want to video this process and I can't really video it over my chair and in my area because there's just not any room over there. Like, it's really not. I'm just going to start with my little mini octopi first. We've got one little purple axolotl that I'm not going to make more of. One, two, three, four, five, six green octos.
I don't have any tags on my jellyfish yet, but I'll probably end up doing that at the show because I'm too lazy to do that right now. It's so many things to do. We will toss these guys in here. And I also have this like really random, super tiny turtle that I made off of a tutorial. I think I'm gonna try and do my own and try to do uh, bobble stitches for the feet because on this one, you had to sew all of the little pieces on and I just didn't find that very practical. But he's going into the pile. And can't forget the Jumbo Dino. Now we're running out of space. <laughs> Now the next thing that I need to inventory is all of my butterfly tops, so that's gonna take a minute. <laughs> going to actually put the stuff that's in this box that I said was not a media ruby stuff in this tub. So let's go through and inventory that. have to take my jumbo dino out and then now all of that stuff fits in there i did forget to inventory this so i'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick but this is just like a little draw bag that i made but i made it in yellow and black so it kind of looked like a bee thing to me so i actually just ended up adding a bee keychain to it and so then i sell them together as a pair and it's really cute but nobody's wanted it so far which kind of sucks but it's okay let's stick that in there and then inventory it real quick we have all of our inventory now in one box and also in box we have all of our scrunchies. Now I'm going to get up off the floor and turn the AC on because it's really hot. <laughs> so I just finished pretty much adding all of the stuff that I needed to add into my inventory on Square. So I just spent like the last hour doing that. So it's now like 519 in the evening. I need to go and run the stuff that I boxed up over here. I need to go ahead and run that to my car and hopefully try to fit that in there along with the wagon and also my tent because it is an outdoor event. And then I also have to get my sign too. So I'm going to be figuring out how to do that. I don't really have a stand that I can put my phone on so that you guys can like watch me try to figure that out. So I'll probably just kind of show you the end result of my car being packed. <laughs> enjoying the mirror river. Okay. So it's 6.50 in the morning right now. I just got my car packed. It is so stuffed <laughs> on both sides. And then in the trunk, I have to put the, we've got to put the tent in the trunk still, and then we're gonna head off. So the setup is from 7.30 to 9.30. Hopefully I can record a little bit of that, but honestly, I don't really know. Cause like I said, I don't really have a tripod, but I'll try my best. So see you there. So it is Tuesday now and we just got done with our first market that was on Saturday. That market was super, super hot, you guys. And then the setup was a little weird because they didn't really have like a flow of traffic. And you'll see in my video that I kind of try to show you that, but basically they kind of wanted you to plan for people entering on like all sides, which really messed me up a little bit because I was like, my setup isn't like that. And I've never set up for something like that. So trying to get everything to work and actually like be pretty and then also attractive to customers was definitely a challenge. It was for this horse auction. So there was tons of horses, it was big farmland, there was a bunch of animals 
bunch of dogs, lots of things to do for the kids and stuff. For the whole day, we had like thunderstorm warnings, which I was really, really hoping that it wasn't going to rain again because I did not want a repeat of the last one. <laughs> but luckily it didn't, but for most of the day, it did look like it was going to storm and rain out. So there wasn't really a lot of traffic because of that. So it was another slow fare again. I'm sorry I can't report back to you guys that I made like a thousand dollars because it just didn't happen again. And you know what? That stuff just happens. You just got to keep pushing forward. You can't let it discourage you. You can't let it get you down. It is going to happen. I do want to be 100% real with you guys. I do want to show you guys that it's not always peaches and cream sometimes, but it's okay. It will be okay and just keep moving forward. So without further ado, let's go on to what I did sell. I did sell four black disc scrubbies. Finally, I finally sold some disc scrubbies. This is the first time. <laughs> I sold one to one customer for $4 and then I sold a set of three to another customer for $10. Then I sold the little blue octopus with no keychain for $6. Blue octopus with the keychain for $6. A green octopus with no keychain for $6. A mini turtle for $6. My only leggy froggy sold for $10. Um, a green gummy bear for $6. A baby dino in the color green for $10. A blue gummy bear for $6. $6. A red gummy bear for $6. You guys, my gummy bear is actually sold and I'm so excited. <laughs> And then two big bees. One was yellow and one was pink. He was kind of Valentine's themed, but you know, he worked for any kind of, any time of the year, but, and both of those were $20 a piece. My total revenue was $115. I paid $50 to be at that craft show. It cost about $14.83 to make the things that did sell. It was about $1.64 for the gas that I used to get to the event and come back. So after all of those expenses, I made $48.34. <laughs> So like I said, not always peaches and cream sometimes, but it's okay, you keep moving forward. Speaking of which, I have another craft fair coming up on Thursday, which is two days from now because it is Tuesday. So it is outdoors again, but it is not in a field full of animals. It is on a main street in my town and I get to set up at starting at 1030 in the morning. So that's going to be a lot of fun. It's like this barbecue cook-off kind of like mingle on Main Street kind of thing. And they said that they have like 114 vendors and like 30 people competing for this barbecue cook-off thing. I'm not really sure what it is. But anyway, I didn't actually have to pay anything to be a part of this show. So I'm so excited about that. So anything that I make at this show is going to be just straight profit minus the materials and all that stuff. I'm super excited and... I have been working on a few more additions to add to my shop. I made these little mini mushroom boys. Like, look at how cute they are. <laughs> look at his chunk and his little head and his little mushroom hat. I am so excited. I finally got around to making these. I have already made, I think, six of these. <laughs> I am obsessed with this, you guys. I It is another one of those things where like when you see pictures of it, you're just like, why is it so popular? And then you actually make it and you're just like, I get it now. He's adorable, okay? Anyway, so we are adding these to our craft fair booth this time on Thursday. And I finally got around to also making little triceratops. Look at how tiny he is. Look at his little nose. Oh my goodness, you guys, I love the things that I make. Anyway, so yeah, I finally got around to making him, and now I want to make him in at least a few different colors. He's my first one, he is my only one, I need to make more. <laughs> that is what we are working on today. All right, so it's about 5.30 in the evening now on Tuesday. I didn't do a whole lot of recording of the process of the things that I've made, but I have made a another little triceratops in blue this time and I cannot stop making these little mushroom guys you guys I've already made like seven of these guys and then I tried to do this little froggy hat one and he looks a little creepy I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna make another one because I just I don't have the eyes so I tried to embroider the eyes and now the frog just kind of looks a little creepy the eyes that I have are the safety eyes so if I tried to put them in there'd be 
like something sticking out the back and so it just doesn't work so I tried to embroider it but like I said he kind of looks a little creepy so I don't know <laughs> I'm definitely going to be making more of these little mushroom guys because I really really feel like this is going to be a bestseller and if it's not then I'm gonna be really sad but either way I'm probably gonna make more because I cannot stop making these and I do want to make just a few more colors of these little triceratops because I also think that these are going to sell really well and I want to have more colors to make more of like a pleasing display to look at so that's what I'm gonna be doing my army is growing so it is Wednesday now. It is 11 in the morning. I didn't record too much of what I was doing yesterday, but I did finally finish the little purple, dark purple triceratops. He's next in line of the color wheel. I think I need to do one in red and then one in yellow, but Aside from that, I do have quite a few errands that I do need to run today, so I won't have as much time to do all of the crocheting that I want to do. I have to take my kitty to the vet because he hasn't been feeling good, and then I also need to do a little bit of grocery shopping. So I need to get that stuff taken care of, which is going to take a good chunk of time from today. But I will hopefully try and get what I can done today before the craft fair tomorrow. goodness you guys this little red triceratops is so much smaller than the other ones I mean okay on camera it doesn't look like it but he is like look at his head compared to this head and that's just because like the yarn for this is thicker than the red that I had the red that I have is really thin honestly so he came out a bit smaller so hopefully that doesn't <laughs> affect it too much I'm just trying to get like a little rainbow going I don't know how many of these I'm actually gonna be able to do before tomorrow now we need to do a yellow one so here's these guys and then there's him and on camera it doesn't look like he's much smaller but look at that he's definitely thinner and tinier it's really hard to capture just how much smaller he is i think you guys think that i'm lying to you but i promise he's like a little mini mini triceratops oh well <laughs> Like I said, now we're gonna get started on a yellow one to add him to the collection. So I just finished this cute little yellow triceratops. It is now 112, so the next time you see me, I will be back after doing all of those errands. <laughs> All right, we are back at it. I did finally make my pink triceratops. Look at how cute he is. I like this one a lot. I think this one's really adorable. This one might be the cutest color out of all of them. <laughs> Look at my little colorful army. So adorable. I don't actually know where to put my pink one though. I know it's usually red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, but I don't really know where pink fits in that. I think it looks pretty here in between the blue and the purple, but I don't know, maybe next to the red? I don't know. We'll figure that out. <laughs> but aside from that, hopefully we can get some more triceratops. It's like six o'clock in the evening right now. I'm kind of feeling a little stressed because I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't have enough things. We're kind of just like playing it ear by ear but I'll keep you guys updated. <laughs> so I actually forgot that I had this bunny that I have not finished yet and there's like this part of his body he's got like one ear and then he's got two feet and a little tail I think. I started doing this honestly not even gonna lie I think like two months ago three months ago but I had stopped halfway through his second ear because I ran out of yarn and I have this gigantic mess of yarn over here but it is the same yarn as the one that I used for the ears. I think now I'm actually going to go ahead and finish this bunny once and for all and she will be on display tomorrow and hopefully find a home. Now if only I could remember what crochet hook I used. Look at how cute she is. This is her little her back. She's got this like little headband. I'm so excited. She looks so cute. She came out really nice for the fact that I started her like three months ago. So <laughs> 
Hi guys, so it is Thursday already. It's 10.30. The event doesn't start until 4, but they said that you can check in starting at 10. So I'm going to go there and set up a majority of this stuff. I'm not going to set up my products or anything, but I do want to go and check in. That way I have ample amount of time because this time I actually do want to try and record setting up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and hopefully get some good footage of setting up. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago All right, I am back at the house for now. I just got pretty much everything done that I could at the craft fair without putting up any kind of merchandise because like I said, it starts at four and you could start setting up at 1030 and I did want to try and get like a good spot. So I was there early to set up the tent and a majority of the setting up before a lot of people got there, but I was done around 11.30. So I came back home and now I'm going to keep on working on a few more items for my stock before I go back at three because I'm gonna, from three to four, I'm gonna start setting up my, my merchandise and getting everything kind of fine-tuned to how I want it. So hopefully we can get a few more things done before then, and then I will cut to setting up the merchandise at the craft show. And I'm so excited. <laughs>
are back. It is the next day. You guys, yesterday, the craft fair, it was so hot. I was dying. <laughs> I drank so much water, but it was super hot and it wasn't very windy and usually it's windy. So I'm like, I'm glad it wasn't windy because otherwise my stuff would have gone like flying everywhere and it's just a pain to deal with. But it was super calm and without that wind, oh my goodness. <laughs> but aside from that, let's get right down to what sold, what didn't sell, how much money I made and all of that other fun stuff. I actually was able to use Square for the first time, which I'm super excited about because I was able to keep track of even my cash sales and stuff on Square, which is so awesome. And then on top of that, I can put in the sales tax that my state usually charges so that it just adds it in there and it's not a big hassle to deal with later after the fact. And then also on top of that, they give you like this whole rundown of everything, even their fees that they charge if you do have like any credit card sales and stuff too. And one thing I do want to tell you guys, if you are looking into getting into any kind of market or just selling anything, even if it's not crochet, if you just want to sell something at a market, go ahead and get the square free little card reader. It's just a little square, literally. That's why I call it square, but let me show you. So this is what it looks like. It's just this really small, and then I have an iPhone. So like this is the attachment for the iPhone, but it's just this really small little square and you slide the card through there and you hook it up to your phone or your iPad or whatever it is that you have and you do it that way. Now I'm telling you guys this because I thought that if I didn't have one of the readers that had a chip reader, then it wouldn't read the card that has a chip. I thought I would have to have a chip reader to make card sales and that is not the case. So this little guy is for free. If you make a Square account, they send you one for free, that little Square thing for free. And you can take credit card sales just immediately. They only have like a little bit of a fee that goes with charging credit cards. I think it's like 2.1% or something plus like 10 cents. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's really not bad at all in the slightest. And it's super helpful. You can keep track of all of your items and all that, everything else. Like it's so helpful. I'm really glad that I got it. This is not sponsored by the way. I'm not sponsored by Square. I'm not sponsored by any anybody. It's just something that actually really did help me out a lot. And I've been doing craft fairs for like a year and a half now. And I'm so excited that I have this. So I'm not sponsored. I'm just trying to help you guys out because I really thought that I would have to spend like $200 on a card reader when that's not the case. You really don't have to. Even the cards with chips in them will get read by that little tiny mag stripe reader. So definitely look into doing that. Like I said, they send you one for free. No shipping or anything, they send you for free. Just a little tip to help you guys out with that. Anyway, let's get right back to the sales and everything else. So I have my Square stuff pulled up right now. I will attach a little picture here as I go along with like the total sales and the fees and all that other stuff. But for now, I am going to go through what items sold because it also keeps track of that, which is so exciting. Like it's awesome. It's like the best thing ever. Okay, so let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. We sold one baby pink Diana for $10. One bandana, which was a blue bandana for $15. And I'm super happy about that because it's the first bandana that I sold so far. <laughs> we sold two charms from my clay stuff, a octopus charm and a little duck charm for $10 each. So $20, a pair of duck earrings, and that was $10. We sold a pair of the black earrings with the black and white marbled earrings for $15. A mini axolotl that I had made, the little purple axolotl. That was actually my first sale yesterday. So none of this is in like any particular order right now, but it was cool because I was still setting up and this little girl came by and she's like, I want this. I was like, okay. <laughs> but we sold the mini axolotl for $8. We sold Okay, you guys, my mini Triceratops, I should have made so many more of these because my mini Triceratops sold out within the first like 30 minutes. And I had like this group of girls come through and they're all like, I want one of these and I want one of these. And I was like, okay, awesome. <laughs> but I only had like one of each color because I only just started making them the day prior. So that kind of sucks because I feel like I could have gotten more sales if I had made more, but I am definitely going to be making more for my 
craft markets to come. But we did sell all five of the mini triceratops for $12 a piece. We also sold some scrunchies. We sold three for $8 for the little bundle deal. I sold another scrunchie for $3. We sold two of our chubby dinos. One of them was the purple one with the green spikes. And then we sold a red one with the white spikes. And both of those are $20 a piece. We sold some gummy bear keychains, which is so exciting. We sold one blue one and we sold one pink one and they were $8 a piece. We sold four mini bee keychains, all of them yellow. We sold two mini blue octopi, one multicolor octopi and a little pink octopi. So that's four octopi and they were all $6 a piece. We sold three of the little mushroom boys and they were $12 a piece. So that is everything that I sold. Now, let me go ahead and put up on the screen over here all of the sales and the fees and then we'll go right over that. Our total gross sales was $302. Our taxes were $13.60 that were collected. So the total sales is $315.60. My fees, which were what Square charges me for running credit cards, it charged me $2.89 for all of the fees. Our net total is $312.71. Now again, $13.60 is gonna get taken out of that and on top of that, the material cost as well. So after everything is all said and done, the total revenue is $315.60. Now, we subtract $13.60 in taxes minus $2.89 for the square fees, about $19.58 in material costs for the items that sold, and minus $1.37 in roughly about the gas that was used. So that brings the total profit for this craft fair to $278.16 which is not bad. <laughs> I see a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of crafters, a lot of crocheters, and they make like $800 at craft shows. They sell out all the time and they just do absolutely amazing, which is wonderful. Like I'm so excited for them. That's awesome. But that's not always the case. It's not always how these craft fairs go and a lot of the times too like you're just trying to figure out which craft fairs are actually going to be profitable if there's going to be enough people uh what's gonna sell what doesn't sell and i'm still definitely trying to figure that out myself and i've only been doing craft fairs for like a year and a half maybe i've probably done about 20 craft fairs all together so far which i mean it sounds like a lot but it's not a lot when you're still trying to learn and i'm still trying to kind of figure out the flow of things. So making $278 at craft fair that went from four in the afternoon till nine is not bad. That's five hours of the craft fair. And it's also something that I just I really enjoy. I want to be able to do this full time. I want this to be my job because I love doing it. I don't mind being out there in that 90 degree weather with no wind, setting up a tent and standing there and selling my items. I love it. I love it so much. I love making these crochet things. I love making patterns. I love selling things. I love bringing happiness to people who buy my things. It's, it's exciting. And if I don't make $800, that's okay. And if you don't make $800, that's okay. We're all just trying to learn and figure it out. And do not be discouraged by all of these big top dogs who are selling out all the time because that's not always reality. And I don't want you guys to feel like that's what you have to do. And if you don't do that, then you're not successful because I'm still gaining so many connections, so many friends, and it's a wonderful experience on top of the profit that you do make. So do not give up if this is how your craft fairs go or if you hit a craft fair and you don't make any money at all. It's okay. It does happen. When you're starting out as a beginner, make sure to just find the craft fairs where the booth rent is $20 to $50 and they help you kind of get used to being in a craft fair. You kind of get into the flow of things and 
it makes it a lot easier to make up that booth rent that you paid 20 to 50 dollars for just a few tips to keep in mind i'm kind of babbling on so if you want some more tips and tricks just to kind of pick my brain from you know what i've experienced what i've done what i've learned definitely make sure to leave it in the comment section below uh just some questions that you might have that you might want answered in a q a and i'll try and see if i can go ahead and make another separate video so that i don't kind of bore you guys and talk your ear off for too long thank you guys so much for coming along with me through this long journey of two craft fairs within a week. I appreciate every single one of you and I love that you, seeing that you guys are just loving my content and watching my channel grow and it is all thanks to you guys and it is super amazing and so exciting. So thank you guys so much again for coming along with this video. If you want to see more like this definitely make sure to subscribe because I do come out with a new video every week on Tuesdays. Thank you guys so much again for watching watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.